Hey guys, it's Melanie from MelanieKahan.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I had some of these tiny Satu stars from a little oopsie. <laughs> so I figured you guys might have some blocks laying around. We're not really sure what to do with it. So I'm going to show you just super fast today how you can turn it into a coaster or even a little bit larger like a, like a mug rug or a placemat. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let's get going. I'm going to show you how to make it. All right, everyone. Now I've been crazy about these Satu stars lately and I had two of these four and a half inch ones that did not end up making it into a project. I, I made a mistake and I actually needed them to be a little bit larger. So I have two of these and I thought, well, how can I still use them? And I decided to make a coaster. All right. So if you have a block, an orphan block laying around, or if you would, if you just love the way these look and want to make one, I'm going to show you how. So first you need your top or a, it could be a solid piece of fabric, or you could make a cute little star like this. And then you need a backing, which is the same size. These are four and a half inches square. So we have our backing and then our star, we're going to place those right sides together. And then you need a scrap piece of batting. Now I like to be able to sew it on the star side so that I can see what those point points are so that I don't inadvertently chop any of them off. So that batting is going to go underneath that back. Then we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch, but we have to leave a hole that way we can flip it right side out and then put our top stitch on. So let's go ahead and go do that. Don't forget we need to leave an opening. Quick back stitch just to make sure things don't split open when I flip it. Okay, coming back around where we started. So I'm just gonna do one little back stitch just to make sure it doesn't split too much when I go to flip it right side out. So then what we need to do is trim our corners slightly so that we get a nice good point. You don't wanna get too close to those threads. All we're doing is reducing that bulk in the seam. And if you have any batting, like flaring out or anything like that, this would be the time to get that cleaned up. Now, if you have a point turner or a chopstick, you can use that or just use your fingernail. We want to pop those corners out and get any bulk straightened out. All right, there we go. So now you want to press it, make sure that iron is on. And I like to roll that seam in between my fingers just to get everything nice and flat. That way there's no bulk stuck in the seam. And then this opening, we want to try to make it look as flush as possible so that it's not noticeable that it was an opening there. You know, do your best. Don't drive yourself nuts over this, but kind of fiddling with it at this point and pressing it is helpful. So now what I like to do is go back to the sewing machine and top stitch it all the way around. It's you know, pretty close to this edge. I end up just using my foot as a guide, put the edge of my coaster here right in the middle of this right part of the foot. And it's going to be just under an eighth of an inch. If you want a little bit larger stitch length for this process, that, that would look really nice. You can go up to like a three. And also if you want to add any quilting onto the top of this, you can do that too. I'm going to add just a couple little stitches in here just for fun. You don't actually need it but um, just to add a little extra interest and then you're all done. These would make an awesome gift. 